I'm telling you, Saturday worship, as far as the law is concerned, is a demonic doctrine. Shut up and don't come at me with all that nonsense. You got to worship on Saturday because of the law. I'm not under the law, Scipio. So, if you don't know, that was Pastor Greg Locke, a controversial preacher who is known for making outrageous claims. And in this sermon from November 20th, 2022, Locke claims that God's command to keep the seventh day Sabbath is a demonic doctrine. I have some thoughts about Pastor Locke's unhinged antinomian rant. Let's dive in. Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus became my Sabbath. And I'm here to tell you, I worship on the first day of the week because of the glory of the resurrection. I am not under the law of the Sabbath. Okay, there is a lot to unpack here. Locke throws out many of the typical antinomian assertions for why he thinks Christians should unhitch from the Old Testament, specifically with respect to the Sabbath. Locke's first reason for stating that the Sabbath is irrelevant to Christians is that Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus certainly did fulfill the typology and predictive prophecies in the Law and Prophets. But when Jesus says that he came to fulfill the law in Matthew 5, 17, the word fulfill in that context means to bring to full expression or to show it forth in its true meaning. In other words, Jesus fulfills the law by teaching and demonstrating how to keep the law properly. We see this throughout chapter 5 of Matthew. Jesus explains the true meaning and application of the various commands from the Torah. This makes sense because the word fulfill is used in contrast with abolish, which means to cause to be no longer in force. Jesus did not come to cause the law to be no longer in force. He came to show us what it means to keep the law properly. That is why, in verse 19, Jesus admonishes his followers to do and teach even the least of the law's commandments. And it's also why, in verse 20, he calls his followers to a way of righteousness that surpasses the scribes and Pharisees. Jesus expected his followers to keep the law better than the scribes and Pharisees did. How do they do that? By keeping the law the way Jesus taught to keep it. That's what the entire Sermon on the Mount is all about. So, in contrast to Pastor Locke's assumption, Jesus does not do away with the law by fulfilling it, but rather, he affirms the law's ongoing validity. According to Jesus, in Matthew 5.18, not even the smallest part of the law will pass away until heaven and earth disappear, and all is accomplished. That is, nothing will pass from the law until the end of the age and the arrival of the new heavens and new earth when the entire created universe passes away. As Christian scholar Dr. David Turner remarks, it would be hard to make a stronger statement of the ongoing authority of the Torah than that made in Matthew 5.18. For more on what Jesus meant when he said he came to fulfill the law, see this article. Next, Pastor Locke says, quote, Jesus became my Sabbath. It is true that the Sabbath is a symbol that points to the rest we have in Christ. However, the idea that the literal Sabbath is therefore no longer necessary is a non sequitur. Paul teaches that our earthly marriages are a symbol of Christ's relationship with the church, but nobody believes that Paul's teaching on the deeper meaning of marriage did away with the literal marriage institution. Likewise, there is no reason to think that the deeper meaning of the Sabbath does away with the literal commandment. Yes, Jesus became our ultimate spiritual rest, and we rest in him, but that does not get rid of the literal commandment. Next, Pastor Locke says that he worships on the first first day of the week, Sunday, in commemoration of the resurrection. That is totally fine that he goes to church on Sunday, but the fact that Jesus rose on Sunday does not negate the command to keep the Sabbath on the seventh day. The idea that Sunday has replaced the Sabbath is not what the apostles or earliest Christians believed or taught. As I explain in chapter 3 of my book, Remember the Sabbath, the Christians in the New Testament did not think of Sunday as a replacement for the Sabbath, but rather they continued to keep the Sabbath. In fact, according to ancient historians, almost the entire entire Christian world outside of Alexandria and Rome continued to keep both the Sabbath and Sunday as late as the 5th century AD. So go ahead and worship on Sunday or any other day if you like. But like the apostles, we should not think that the Sabbath has been done away with. Let's continue. I'm telling you, Saturday worship, 
as far as the law is concerned, is a demonic doctrine. So this statement actually borders on blasphemy. Pastor Locke calls a divine command of the Lord a demonic doctrine. That would mean that Jesus practiced a demonic doctrine when he worshiped on the Sabbath. That would mean that the apostles practiced a demonic doctrine when they worshiped on the Sabbath. That would mean that the new Gentile Christians who attended Sabbath services every week to hear Moses preached were practicing a demonic doctrine. That would mean that almost every Christian outside of Alexandria and Rome who kept the Sabbath as late as the fifth century practiced a demonic doctrine. Thank God we have modern antinomian preachers like Greg Locke to tell us that Jesus and all these Christians were wrong, right? Otherwise, we might think that keeping the Sabbath is actually a biblical doctrine and something that many Christians throughout history have observed. Now, I apologize for my sarcasm, but statements like this from Pastor Locke are deserving of mockery because they are just so absurd. Let's continue. Shut up and don't come at me with all that nonsense. You gotta worship on Saturday because of the law. I'm not under the law, Scipio. I'm under the grace of the resurrected Savior. Okay, I agree with Pastor Locke that Christians are not under law but under grace, but that does not mean that we don't have to obey God's commandments anymore. Pastor Locke is referencing Romans 6.14. In that verse, being not under law does not mean being freed from our obligation to obey God's law. This is clear from the next verse, which reads, quote, What then, are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. So, being under grace does not give us freedom to sin. And according to Paul, sin means breaking the law's commandments. So if not under law means freed from having to obey the law, then Paul's statement in Romans 6.15 makes no sense. A better interpretation of this verse is what the scholar Charles E.B. Cranfield has proposed, which is that Paul is not thinking of the law generally in this verse, rather he is thinking of it in its function of condemning sinners. In other words, when Paul says that we are not under the law, what he he means is that we are not under condemnation for breaking the law. We are not under the law's condemnation. Instead, we who are in Christ are forgiven and under grace. Christ took upon himself the punishment due to us for our sin, freeing us from sin's dominion and the law's condemnation for our sin. But again, being under grace does not give us license to disobey God, including in regard to the Sabbath. Hey, I hope this video was helpful and recognizing the antinomian errors in Pastor Locke's statements. If you want more information on this topic, consider getting my book, Remember the Sabbath. I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you want to see more content like this, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. You can also hit that little bell so that you'll be notified when new videos like this are released. I'll see you next time. Bless and shalom.